Hi everyone, welcome to another video here on Urban Family Homestead. Today we are going to um, show you how the garden beds are progressing and show you some of the changes that we've made. Um, and I'm also going to show you at the end our actual like uh, garden plans, like where everything is going. I made it in Canva, so it's really um, visually appealing to me. I'm super visual, so um, I literally have where the carrots are going to go. I literally have little pictures of carrots. So we're going to do that later in the video. But for right now, um, some really exciting things are happening. I'm going to turn you around. Our soil decided to show up right there. It's five cubic yards of soil, and it is... I go and it is I think it's like a third cow manure and then the other two-thirds is like topsoil has a little bit of um, it's kind of like a native soil mix but also has some a little bit of sand and a little bit of uh, like mulch and that sort of thing like bark um, so it's a pretty um, fluffy yet nutrient dense soil I used it last year and um, let's just say my plants really, really loved it. And so we're gonna use it again this year since we are expanding the garden. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and take you guys on a little tour of like all that and um, the future plans for it because my husband has, is, he's almost done building the beds. And um, yes, he mostly builds the beds because I, especially right now, I decided to bust my ankle a few days ago so he is flying solo on getting all these things done for me and I really really appreciate it so we're gonna go look at all his hard work okay I have I'm working with a new camera today so I'm trying to like figure out how this is gonna work okay so we got our plum tree in it's already budding it obviously needs a really bad prune I started pruning it I don't know how well you can see it um, so we got it in the ground we think it's a semi-dwarf. We got it free from a lady last year. And so we threw it in the ground this year. Um, okay, so you'll be able to tell the progression of the beds because all of this is, obviously it's new. Um, it has linseed oil on it. So we'll darken over time, like the corn beds over there. Um, but we use these X bricks and I think, I don't know if you guys remember, I, maybe I can insert a picture if I can find one easily that, well, you can also visualize <laughs> um, this right here. These are the original beds, one, two, three. So these are going to actually be the darkest. And um, so the way the system works is you can just slide new boards in and out when they warp or rot, but you can also expand your garden. We did have to do a little bit of digging in over there to make them level. Um, and they're not all going to be perfectly level because our ground is very bumpy and slopey, but we are basically just added two boards to the system that was already here. Just add two boards, boom, we've got another garden bed. Same for this one. Nope, we're gonna go this way. Same for this one. <clears throat> and that one, we need more wood, so that's why this one's not finished, and that was the big bucket that the plum tree came in. So, but this one, we added some bricks at the end, just expanded all the way. And then we've got another large bed. So it's basically done, except for that last board at the back. And I'm going to go ahead and also make this a bed. So we'll put bricks there. Probably one in the middle or two in the middle. Depends how much. We're trying to make sure we use up all the wood. And that it's not like, uh, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So I might end up putting like two stacks of bricks instead of one. If we don't have long enough pieces to use up scrap wood. Um, and then there's a little thing here. So this will be a really long tomato bed this year. And then this is just our path. So if I can give you another look. Ooh, this boot is not easy to work with. Okay, so I'm standing in the tomato bed. Essentially, this will be the path down the garden. And then we'll have a smaller path. Okay, same size path. Down this side. And then we will have a little path here to kind of work with. And then, of course, that little center one's little flowers, but everything else will be veggies. So that is how that's working. And then my husband and I put these before I busted my foot into the ground. That's one cherry. That's another cherry. I can't decide if I need to prune them more. I probably do at the top. Um, these are... This is a Stella cherry. It's a dwarf. 
And this one is an Angela cherry. It is also a dwarf. And then that's an apple tree. I have no idea what variety it is. So that's going to a neighbor because I got another apple tree that I'm going to put in a pot for right now. And we were supposed to bring our other two trees to the front, our Gala and Fuji, but I don't know if that's happening at all. I have no idea. Um, it's a little hard with me injuring myself and my husband only has so many, so much time, right? He's got lots of projects that he likes to do. So, oh, and I forgot to show you guys this bed. <clears throat> so this is the strawberry bed. It has a bunch of stuff in it. it. has these weird things that, oddly enough, my husband really likes these things. They smell like honey. I don't know what they are. And leaves. So this needs to get all cleared out. <clears throat> and redone so we can put the strawberries in there and then uh probably herbs in there so yeah that's kind of it that is the garden plan so far and how it's coming um we'll finish these up and i'm going to get dirt in them i'm going to probably fill the beds the lower beds um so it doesn't take quite as much dirt and um has something to break down i'm going to put some branches <laughs> that's how i busted my foot i was bringing a branch from the back to the front step down yeah disaster so um i'm gonna bring branches and different things like like wood and different things like that like scrap pieces to fill the bottoms of the bed and then i will fill <laughs> the rest with um with the dirt so yeah so let's go inside and go ahead and take a peek at what exactly is going to go into the garden beds and i will insert a really fun clip of the truck dumping all this stinky soil. Okay, so this is the garden layout that I did in Canva. Like I said, I really like a visual representation. And so this is what my 2022 garden will look like. Um, some of these well, I'd say most of these are going to be a late spring summer garden, but some of these things will be added as we go through the season. Um, but I kind of just added everything that I thought I was going to grow in the beds. So basically what I did is just grabbed a presentation type layout blank, and then I blew up each section so that I could have some notes down here and just kind of put what I'm going to be planting and where I'm going to be putting trellises and that sort of thing. So I'm actually going to pull it up. I downloaded it. <laughs> so I did it this way and I actually printed it out. And I think it's really neat to do something super visual like this and then to be able to print it out. Um, because then, see, as you can see, I just have my pictures with everything. It's a little laggy. <laughs> if you listen carefully, you could probably hear my little chickens in the background. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. This is... The original garden bed this one this one and this one and I'm going to do cattle panels as arches and I'm going to do them over the beds and I'm going to do it on every other one so I'm not blocking out sunlight to other important things but then in the winter I can actually cover this with a tarp and some clamps and I can create a high tunnel for myself in my front yard so it's kind of a, a two for I'm trying to plan ahead here <laughs> uh, I don't always do the winter garden like I want to and so this is gonna help me be able to do that so if I just look down here, um, basically in the corn beds, I'm going to have corn. I'm going to use, I'm using a lot of companion gardening. So I looked up information and wrote myself some notes such as companions for corn, which corn is the main thing I'm going to be growing in this bed. So things that are really great for corn are beans, cucumber, marigolds, melons, parsley, you know, etc. like a whole bunch of other things. Um, marigolds, repel Japanese beetles, you know, corn is a heavy feeder. So, you know, beans and peas add nitrogen, things like that, that are important for me to know on a quick hand basis. I'm still learning myself. So I want to have these notes for myself so that I can also then make notes on the back of these papers or my journal or wherever. So for the future, I can know what worked and what didn't work for my area. Also, I want to know what I'm planting in my beds because I'm going to have to rotate crops. You can't put crops for the most part. You don't really want to plant crops more than 
Um, some of them are more than two years in a row. Some are more than like you should switch them every year. Some are three years. So you really want to know what it is you're planting in your garden so that when you go plant your garden for the next year, you know what you're going to be planting to keep the health of the soil. So this year I'm going to go ahead and do corn one more year before I switch it. I'm going to do pumpkins and I will have trellises for the pumpkins, but pumpkins will probably, some of them will lay on the ground, some of them will go up, and then um, the uh, beans, they are going to go up the stalk of the corn. So the corn stalk is actually going to be the trellis for the beans. And then the marigolds will help keep things uh, away, and then the peas, of course. They're probably gonna be bush peas, so, I will probably have a short little trellis in there or I'll use corn again. So yeah, so that's what that's going to look like for both of them. This is going to be on the far end if you're looking out of my house to the right. It's the third bed that's going to be long. We haven't built it yet in the video that I did just prior to this. Um, I showed you where the tomatoes are going to be and essentially I'm going to have a cattle panel that's going down the center of it or I might do a cattle panel with a wood frame, something to keep it really sturdy and I'm going to grow tomatoes up it with herbs um, and then I'm gonna do carrots on the outside because they're really great to plant with them and that bed's gonna be nice and deep over there because it slopes downward so that actually might end up being a taller bed than 12 inches so it's a perfect situation for carrots I'm just gonna grow a whole bunch along the line and um, carrots you can succession grow so I'll be continuously growing carrots um, there's some things you shouldn't have and that's down here um, I made a little note for myself um, but uh, yeah companion planting I mean it's really the way to go I you know for example down here it says basil improves tomato growth and deters bat pests such as flies and tomato hornworms so it's really just a great like symbiotic relationship to be able to companion plant. Uh, it keeps me from needing to spray anything or do a lot of um, pest control weeding, anything like that, because companion planting just takes care of itself. So this year I'm going to grow peppers. Um, I'm going to do, whoops, see if we can, it kind of lags a little bit in this program. Stay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to do different uh, like chives and uh, bell peppers. Uh, hot peppers, sweet peppers, you know, all different kinds. Uh, spinach is really good to grow with it. More basil. I'm trying to grow as many herbs as I can within the gardens because it just really helps with pests. And also I want to collect as much herbs as I can so that I can have them through the winter when they don't grow. So yeah, so that's what uh, one of the beds is going to look like. Another bed I'm going to be doing um, a, a few different varieties of lettuce. Um, Butterhead, romaine, and red leaf are the three I concentrate on because it's the three that my family enjoys the most. Although my husband did mention wanting some iceberg, so I might throw that in somewhere or trade some of these out or maybe do it in a container <laughs> and try that out. I've never grown iceberg, so we'll see how that works. Um, so this is one of the ones that will have arches and basically it's going to have an arch panel that starts here along the way and arch up over and end right here and I'm going to have melons growing up it and then the lettuce will go below. Lettuce is extremely tolerant. It's good for cold weather, hot weather, it doesn't really matter and I'm going to plant a lot of, I'm going to plant more than three obviously. I'm just going to plant them really close together because I like to harvest the leaves not just the whole heads. So I only harvest the whole head when it bolts and I can no longer use it and I want to get it out of there and do more. So I'm only going to be doing leaves. So these will be several in the rows like this and I will plant carrots in between because the bed I'm going to put those in also has a nice deep uh, spot for them. Let's see. Uh, the front left bed if you're looking out of my house is going to have broccoli. I'm going to have a couple different kind. Um, this is the cauliflower. I have a purple cape cauliflower I'm really excited about trying out and again all my beds are going to have marigolds. I'm going to have peppermint and uh, rosemary actually surrounding the garden because it keeps the deer away. We have a lot of deer and we do not have a fenced garden. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, spinach, butterhead, um, is going to go right in here. We do go through a lot of lettuce as a family. And again, I'm just going to be snipping it. All of these greens will get snipped and not harvested fully. So they can be jam packed in there that, and I'll still, you know, I'll get a ton and it'll just continue to grow. My next bed is going to be bok choy, celery, sugar peas, marigold, and chamomile. Um, 
So uh, I'm doing a huge herb garden in the back if we can get to it. I am really crossing my fingers that we can. Um, but yeah, we're going to do bok choy and celery here and we're going to do some more snap peas. Uh, through here, the little sugar peas. My kids just eat these things out of the garden. They love them. And you can like freeze them and we just eat them throughout the summer um, as snacks and with different dinners. I'm going to have a bed that is going to be uh, garlic and onions, like storage onions. And I'm throwing some chamomile in here. Um, and I really want to do some shallots as well. But the carrots are going to go down the middle. And I think it's... I'm trying to remember why I did that. I think it was because you don't want to grow garlic and onions directly next to each other. So I wanted a barrier. I already have onions in one of my beds and I want to continue to grow more in there. There's actually quite a few. And so I'm going to continue with that and then add garlic. I was planting garlic in this area. I'm going to put it over here and completely line it and put a barrier and just continue to grow these. And I don't know. We'll see. I've never been that successful at growing onions very well. I might also try some container gardening with them because I feel like I'm just a horrible onion gardener. <laughs> so, um, and we use a lot of them, so I want to get better. This is another bed that's going to have an arch trellis because we're going to have cucumbers going up one side and we will have peas going up the other side. And then of course we're going to have our marigolds and our calendula. I have a couple beds that grow calendula pretty prolifically. I believe they're in the marigold family, so they actually do really well at repelling certain insects. And I use calendula for tea. It's a great anti-inflammatory. I use it for salves and um, different oils and stuff. So it's actually a fantastic a flower to have in your garden um, and it's great to use it's edible so I'm going to have those sprinkled around and I'm probably going to harvest part of it and put them in containers and plant them around my house as well they grow so quickly you can take the heads off and within a couple days you'll just have a ton more it's just the more you pick the more that will come <laughs> and so they are fantastic and really easy to care for it you can't mess these up so really suggest putting those in your garden and then the last bed that I have, <clears throat> which is the la last arch trellis, is I'm going to have pole beans, which need that trellis going over. And I'm going to have more cucumbers, marigolds, of course, and zucchini. And I only put two zucchini here because I am having only two zucchini plants. <laughs> I had so much dang zucchini last year off of one plant. It was ridiculous. I even had some that I'd forgotten about and they were like nine pounds. And it was just kind of a zucchini disaster. And everyone in my area had so much zucchini they were trying to give it away and nobody wanted it it was just zucchini madness so i'm only planting two plants i may do one dark star and one san pascal or i might do both of them the san pascal ones i want to try those out and see how they do um but yeah i'm just doing the two <laughs> that is it but I, they need quite a bit um and truthfully i may do another trellis here in the center that goes straight up to the um, archways of these. That way I can have these trellising upwards as well. Um, and I might then be able to get some more herbs and stuff in here. I don't know, maybe some borage or whatever. Um, but yeah, so that is my garden plans. I highly recommend doing them in Canva because they have all sorts of like go in here elements, just search up like whoops, such a like corn. They have all the cutest little like pictures and I'm so visual and you can just, I, like I said, I, I copy and pasted these and put them into their own thing so that I could blow them up and get like more specific. And then I went and copied this photo, put it into here and shrank it down. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Oh, and then I'm doing potatoes. So, I'm gonna do like uh, some gold potatoes, yams, fingerlings, and one of these, I have red here. We don't really eat red potatoes. I wasn't sure what to put, if I was gonna do more fingerlings or whatever, but I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put a crab apple tree in one of these pots that I have because I don't really need three buckets of potatoes. Maybe I do. I might do more next year, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to see how they go. I've never grown potatoes before. Um, and then just put my crab apple tree in here because I want it to survive and it's sitting in a bag and it needs to get dealt with. So anyway, this is a fantastic way to have a super like artsy visual thing if 
you're not a great drawer like myself, this is a great way to get it all down on paper and to have a little fun with it, kind of plan out where you're going to do things, put your trellises, et cetera, see what works. And then of course you can create notes for yourself so that you can print these out and have them forever. You can write notes on the back. It's just, I didn't know, I don't know why I didn't think to do this before. I almost did the Farmer's Almanac Garden Planner, but it costs money and I was trying to find a free way to do it. And this hits the spot for that. So yeah, so that's it. That's my, uh, that's my Canva garden. All right, so that is it for today. Just showing you the garden, showing you the Canva plan. And uh, yeah, this weekend we get to take these chickens out for a field trip and we're planting a ton of seeds. We're finally gonna do it, like flats and flats of seeds. That's the plan. <laughs> so I will bring you guys along when we do that this weekend. And I guess that's it. So just hit the like button if you really enjoyed these kinds of videos and hit the subscribe button so that you know when more gardening and homesteading content is coming to you. So until then, I will talk to you guys later. Goodbye.